All right, let's continue this lovely playthrough, and hopefully tonight, you know, I don't get as much of a headache. I'm hoping, like, I'm probably going to cut myself off after, like, 25, 30 minutes, because I had a huge headache after the last episode. This game doesn't number on me. But I'm just going to kind of look just like continue, see where life takes us, talk about whatever. I actually just finished up my stream, like, about 30 minutes ago, so my voice is a little bit tired. Uh, so, we just got to kind of deal with that. Just skip the cutscene, and I think the next thing up is, like, a boss battle. I've been kind of, like, looking at a long play to kind of, like, gauge, like, how far into the game I am. And I think I saw that we're in, like, a, uh, a boss battle. But I can't remember. I think we watched this, right? Hell, mate, you all right? Yeah, we did. Okay. But yeah, we'll see where this, uh, level takes us and just talk about whatever. I'll think of something. I'm really good at just kind of, like, uh... Finding some random thing to talk about. Hell if I know what, though. So what's going on over here? I think it's supposed to be like a boss battle-y kind of thing coming up. I think. We'll see. But the last level was full of so many enemies, I just... I got frustrated. I'm like, there's just too much. Like Alright. Be a voice a little bit tired. Part of us uh, streaming seven days a week. For almost three years on end now, is uh, my voice like never has a day to just kind of uh, just kind of get a rest? Because like I don't take like short streams or anything, right? Like I do seven hours minimum per night. I tend to be on like around like 12:45 a.m. Eastern. I go to like 8 a.m. It's like seven and a quarter. So uh, my voice doesn't really get much time to recuperate. Like at the absolute max, it has what like 16 hours to try and like recuperate, recover. If that, because like right now I'm like recording YouTube videos, so like, you know, it has even less time to recuperate today. And obviously I talk to people when I'm not streaming, so. This voice, th th this voice hurts after a while. Um, so, one big thing I do with someone streaming is like, I try and keep like a very like level tone. Like you probably noticed, like my voice doesn't like really fluctuate like in volume too much, like it doesn't really get high pitch, low pitch. Uh, I try and protect my voice as much as I can so I don't lose it you know because I can lose my voice very very easily if I'm not careful like I'm a big pro wrestling fan I go to a lot of wrestling shows uh, I lose my voice for like three four days after those it's miserable so I'm very very cautious like with just the level I talk especially if I'm streaming so much especially like if I'm kind of like in this business you know you got to be you gotta be kind of aware of that. I feel like a lot of people don't really think about that, and they get like the very like high ecstatic like just voices going, and it's it strains you. It does. And if you don't think it strains you, and you're fine with it, I mean, there's a good chance like you know maybe you you would be fine. Like maybe your voice won't give out like as easy as mine. Like everyone's different, but eventually it does kind of catch up to you if you don't give yourself like a proper break. It really, really does. So yeah, that's the thing. Get some help. And I'm just like trying to like remember like what I've already covered in the series. Like I know like yesterday I was talking about like YouTube ideas and things I wanted to do. We covered horror movies and I was talking about like my lack of like genre. Uh, variety. When it comes to movies, things like that. What can we discuss today? You know what's pointless? Uh, frozen dinners. I actually just ate a frozen dinner. I had, like, a Zata Reigns, I think it is, called, like, Black and Chicken Alfredo. It was delicious. And now, I tend to buy, like, a lot of, like, frozen dinners and just, like, quick meals in general. Just, like, have one, like, after my streams or whatever. Or, like, if I get, like, really hungry and want a snack because I just don't feel like cooking or I'm tired. And so I kind of, like, stock up. So I've kind of, um... I've kind of, you know, gained my favorites. And I'm pretty certain that uh, Stouffer's is by and far the best, uh, the best frozen dinner brand by and far. I had like a Hungry Man uh, the other day, and the Hungry Man was repulsive. I don't remember like when did, I don't know like when Hungry Man got so bad, but I had like this fried chicken one, and I felt so much regret eating it because I had like a thousand calories and it was like 2,200 milligrams of sodium. 
I think it was like a barbecue fried chicken. My god. And it tasted terrible, too. It's like, I don't know, I don't know, like, don't know when they went downhill, but, like, I remember that being, like, the top quality frozen, uh, frozen meal brand, right? Like, it was Hungry Man was at the top. And then you had, like, Stouffer's Lasagna was, like, up there. Like, Marie Calendars, or Calendars, however you pronounce it, was pretty good. But yeah, for some reason, like, the, the Hungry Man, like, really dipped down to, like, more expensive, heavier banquet, like, level. And when you go, like, to banquet level, like, there's really no recovery. Like, that is the lowest of the low. By and far. It made me sad. The thing is, like, there's, like, lots of foods out there that you kind of, like, get nostalgic for. Like, I used to always have Hungry Man's, like, with my father. Like, I would go to his house. And we would either get Subway or, like, Hungry Man Frozen Dinners, and we'd watch, like, SNL. When I was, like, in elementary school or, like, early high school and stuff. So maybe I just, like, have nostalgia for it? I don't know. And, like, maybe it's always been bad? I don't know. But, like, I just don't remember them being this bad. But then again, I used to, like, remember Subway being really good. But, like, now Subway's, like, actually awful. And I can barely order Subway anymore with, like, without wanting just to, like, throw up. Like, it borderline repulses me. I don't know if anyone else, like, listening to this is, like, repulsed by Subway. This is actually a frequent talking topic on my stream, though. Um, just, like, how far Subway's kind of fallen. Like, I can't even eat, like, you know, like, meatball subs there anymore or anything like that. Like, it's just, it's got bad. Especially compared to, like, you know, like, Firehouse Subs and Jersey Mike's and places like that. Subway's kind of, like, the last resort for me now. Like, if I really can't order anything else, I'll get Subway. Like, it's got expensive. It's like a meatball sub for them now is like eight bucks. And, like, it's not like even like a decent quality meatball sub, you know? It's like a last resort, just tastes very frozen meatball sub. And the bread's not fresh. Like, nothing's good. Like, your cold cuts and spicy Italians, like, everything just kind of tastes old. Like, the lettuce tastes old. Maybe I just have, like, really bad subways. I don't know. Like, I miss, like, when they were good. But on the flip side, like, McDonald's has been better, like, of all places. But, like, I don't really eat much fast food anymore, so I don't get to, like, enjoy, like, the newer I kinda don't hate this McDonald's now. Which is a shame. Because me high school years would've loved this McDonald's. I'm gonna die here. I don't think this boss here really likes McDonald's either. But yeah, that is what it is. Alright. What do we got down here? Shit. Not good. That's a tough boss. That thing takes a lot of damage. Does it respawn me with the boss or does it respawn with the Chimera? Is the question. Oh, wait, can I do damage with it? Like with this, uh. This truck here? Because I think there's red on that. Like if the Stalker runs by that, <clears throat> I think that's the name of it. I think that's what they just called it. Um. I'm gonna probably blow up that truck and take it out easy. Alright. Let's see. Whew. Let's see. It's a cool boss. But yeah. Just, I don't know, like, lots of, like, things I used to eat, eat as a kid, like, just are not as good as I remember it being. Besides SpaghettiOs. SpaghettiOs are, like, still king to me. SpaghettiOs are fantastic. I don't care what anyone says. I swear by him. Will this blow up? Is that just a prop? I don't even know. Maybe it doesn't blow up. It looked like it would. Yeah, SpaghettiOs are still king. Just canned spaghetti in general is still king. Condensed Campbell, like, Campbell soup, like tomato soup, chicken noodle soup, still top tier to me. Like, those haven't got worse. Wendy's is still fantastic. That's never been bad to me. Like, a lot of other foods I used to, like, just kind of have got bad. But the one thing I've kind of, like, grown, like, a big appreciation for are, like, um, those, like, cheese crackers. Like, you know, like, like the bright fluorescent orange crackers that have, like, the cheddar cheese or peanut butter in the middle? Uh, the one I get, like, uh, it's usually, like, Lance or Austin. Are the companies that make them? At least, like, in my area. 
I'm sure like those are probably the big ones, like at least in America. Because I've never seen like any other company make them. Or at least not many. I've grown very fond of those. Like I used to think like those are the worst. Like those are, like the last thing I wanted to see. Like if I was at school and like those are my snack, I would hate everything. Now I love it. I bought like a 27 pack of them the other day, and it was like th it was like four bucks I think for 27. And I'm like this is amazing. I can eat snacks for cheap. I was very happy. Super, super happy. Oh god. Let's go. And like now I just kind of like buy those like my primary snack. Like habitually. Like I buy those and I buy like those like little like, you know, um, cracker sticks kind of. That uh, have like a little cheese dipping cup. I love those. That was like my favorite in school. Wow, this thing doesn't die. I mean, I wasn't really shooting at it there, but my god. What a boss. Alright. Yeah, I like those. Or like the ones that come with like the red stick and like you get to spread the cheese. Like those are good too. Same idea. You know. There it is. I always look at the rug swap first. Alright. Hmm. Let's see if I can get him this time. I don't know though. I don't know, man. Also, I just noticed my color grading. This is like a big rapid uh, talk. Or like switch of uh, conversation. But I just looked over at my recording software on a different monitor. My nice secondary. And I just noticed the coloring of this game is so much better on like my uh, video preview box than it is on my main monitor. And I'm wondering if it's because my monitor here is like that I'm playing on is 1440p. Trying to play a 7, not even like a 720p rendered game. I don't know if this game even made full 720p. In 06. But I just was like how much duller the colors look on the main monitor I'm playing on. Not like it's like much, much better on the other monitor, but I gotta look into like my coloring, I guess, on this monitor after I'm done recording this. Because like it's a pretty massive difference, not gonna lie. But I'm also wondering if it's just because I have it like in a tiny box on a lower resolution monitor. I wonder. Ugh. Let's go here. Yeah. This thing is so tough. Will it turn around? Yeah, it will. There we go. Whew. That was a tough thing. Sweet. Cool little level, though. I enjoyed it. approached the containment cell on the convoy. The cell had 14-inch lead walls, but even so, given Hale's condition, I didn't want him anywhere near it. With the stalkers gone, we were able to airlift the cell back to Northern Command. The exchange with the Americans would have to wait. We were about to execute a very risky offensive operation. The Chimera had been using a network of underground tunnels to attack undetected. The tunnels formed a nexus in Nottingham, and if we sealed them off, we would at least briefly have the upper hand. Alright, the entire concept of like tunnels underground by the aliens and whatnot reminds me so much of like Gears of War. And both games kind of came out around the same time. Gears of War 1 was like September 06, and the PS3 came out like November uh, 06, I believe. Was Gears of War 06? I think it was, right? 
Let's check. October 06. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. November 06. So, yeah, like, they both kind of came out, like, within, like, the same month of each other. Okay. That's kind of cool, though. Two games, two completely different platforms. Both kind of, like, have, like, the uh, network of tunnels going. Although this game doesn't, like, really focus on the loco uh, lo not locus, but, like, Chimera tunnels too much. Like, locus holes and stuff like that were such a big deal in the first Gears. But it's kind of came to mind. I'm like, that sounds really familiar. Alright. Yeah, it's still s a really cool game. This kind of, like, gives it, like, a D-Day vibe here. Although, when it comes to, like, D-Day scenes, Call of Duty 2 is the best. I can't think of, like, another game that kind of gave me, like, the, uh, the true horror of, like, playing, like, D-Day. Or living, like, D-Day. Like, Call of Duty 2 did. Well, you know what? Like, even, like, Call of Duty World War 2 had, like, that, uh, war mission called D-Day. Like, where you had to, like, just basically die a billion and a half times. Like, you yourself and, like, your team had to, like, move up. That game did, like, did it really cool, like, in a multiplayer kind of setting. But it's like being outgunned, facing like a billion and a half things, charge shooting down at you. That's kind of like the vibe I got like right away from the opening to this level. Although now that I'm kind of like moving out of it, not quite. But still, initial thoughts was like, this is D-Day. It's not really. But still, the impression stands. Alright. Yeah, Gears of War was, like, the best, but I'm pretty sure I already discussed Gears of War during this, too. My conversation topics tend to kind of, like, loop back to the same thing, if you can't tell. Which is what it is. But I've just been kind of, like, discussing things I love and stuff during the series, because, like, why not? I don't really focus on that, like, a lot with my content. I just kind of, like, carry conversations, however, and mention my love for coffee and whatnot, but... Let's well, just kind of like treat this as like a get to know the Alex sort of video uh, series. Why not? It's kind of like what it is. It's like kind of like a podcast of like all just stupid stuff you probably didn't need to know, but you get to know anyways. And it works. So cool. Big Gears of War was good. Halo was good. I, yeah, no, I vividly remember talking about all this, and like, yeah, I talked about like Ghost Recon 2 and all that, all those other games I used to play. What's the game I used to always play, though, that I didn't have not talked about yet? You know what? Rush 2. Rush 2 N64. That game is wonderful. I love that game. But mainly for the stunt track. Because you can just, like, make the uh, Rush 2 physics freak out, and my friends and I used to just, like, spend hours and hours playing on the test track, or the stunt track for that game. Barely ever doing the racing, but the stunt track was like premium. And now, uh, I went back and played that game on stream during my uh, Dead by Daylight killer cues, because like those can take like 20 minutes sometimes. I played that like last year again, or like a year and a half ago, and only really found myself loving the racing. And yeah, that game's just good, like that game's aged really well. But, like, a lot of racing games of that era have aged very, very well, I think. Like, the entire, like, N64 era of racing games, like, PS1. There were a lot of good ones. There was, like, NASCAR Rumble. There was, um, the, the Volkswagen Beetle game. The Lamborghini game was really good. Obviously, Mario Kart 64. Crash Racing. That was really, really, like, awesome, actually. Uh, Ridge Racer 64, Ridge Racer Type 4. Gran Turismo 1 and 2. There were a lot of great racing games. Dreamcast had a bunch, like Tokyo Extreme Racers, like one of my favorite racing games of all time. And probably one of my favorite Dreamcast games, too. The Dreamcast is loaded with great games, like Tokyo Extreme stands out. But that might be like more of like a nostalgia thing, I don't know. I can't tell yet, but I need to go back and replay it. But I've always had like a huge fondness for racing games. My problem is, though, like, I never play them enough to, like, get, like, become, like, a master of them. Outside of Mario Kart 8, I put, like, 800-ish hours in Mario Kart 8. But outside of, um, outside of that, uh, like, that one exception, I never play them, like, enough to become, like, a huge, like, just, ma like, master of them. 
but I love them. Like next card game, Wreckfest and Forza Horizon 4. And like, um, I have like Gran Turismo 6, so obviously like Forza 6, Forza 7. Oh god. Ugh. Sonic Team Racing, Sonic Racing All Stars. Like arcade simulation doesn't really matter. Like I get really into them. I don't know, like, there's just like something so basic about racing games that just is also so fun. And I can't help but love them. I'm always like looking for like a new one to get. Like I'm really tempted by like the new Moto GP. Because I never like really play motorcycle racing games. But like I always loved them. And I like I love um like wave race and stuff like that. Like I like um just really anything that's racing. Like I always have a very good time. I played, uh, I was doing, like, retro streams, like, a year ago, and I did, like, Hydro Thunder, and I loved it. And then, like, there was, like, this PS1 Bomberman Fantasy Race. Oh, so fun. Basically, case in point, I just love racing games. I'm contemplating, um, buying Split Second again. Although the PC version ain't great. It's, like, locked to 30 FPS, like, you want to do, like, this really, like, out-there mod... And stuff for it, but even so, I'm willing to put up like with an awful frame rate for a racing game just to play that again. Cause like that game's super good, and like Blur, and Fuel, and Nailed. Oh my god! I did, now I'm just like listing racing games that I love. I really like the Crew too. Like Crew Two kind of got like you know slightly pooed on, but uh, I like that one. I might just, like, be a sucker for, like, any racing game, to be honest. Like, it doesn't even, like, even need to be, like, that good. I'm just like, yeah, it's a racing game. It's fun. I like it. Can't help it. I don't know if that's, like, a bad thing or shows, like, a lack of taste. I don't know. Did I kill them all? Holy crap. That was the end of the level. Wow. Okay. That was a quick level. Cartwright's squad had run into heavy resistance. I needed to get them help right away. A group of soldiers had just stormed a Chimera mortar position. Hale was the only one to make it out. I radioed him to look for a shortcut through an old train tunnel. The tunnel was mostly blocked by a Chimera power conduit, but I knew if Hale could find a way through, it would turn the tide of the battle. Two things. I've been noticing I'm like the only survivor, like always. So I'm wondering if there's going to be a twist, like, I'm actually killing them, I don't know. But, like, I noticed, like, in a lot of these battles, I'm the only survivor, it's been, or, like, they've brought up, like, how I'm the only one that walked away a lot. I'm wondering if there's going to be a twist involving that. And two, I'm going to cut the episode here on the level conduits, we'll continue it uh, for the next episode. Whenever I get around to uploading that, just because, like, I feel like I've kind of, like, reached all the conversations I want to reach to this episode. You know? But, uh, that was a fun little one. Those are, like, two really fun missions. And I don't have a headache. That was perfect, like 20 minutes, just what I needed. So uh, thanks for watching, y'all, and I'll catch you for the next one. Or I won't if you decide to stop watching, which I don't blame you. But uh, if you do keep watching, I'll be here. So take care, y'all. Toodles.